What's up SSP dive team? Today I'm going to show you guys how to remove and install a propeller on a Nimbus 4000 power boat. Here's a look at the five blade propeller that we're going to be replacing. There's not enough clearance between the prop and the strut for a traditional setup, so we're using a modified chain and hook puller. Let me know if you want more information on how I made ours. First things first, we're going to hang our tool bucket from the shaft and get this prop zinc off. We need to remove the prop zinc to access the prop nut. All you need for this is a good set of allen keys and some dexterity. Once the zinc is off, go ahead and set that aside in the bucket. This prop nut doesn't use a traditional cotter pin. Instead, it uses a stainless tab washer. To get the tab washer off, we have to bend the tab up that's securing the prop nut in place. Once that's off, we can then loosen the prop nut. This other video linked above shows how to remove and reinstall a traditional prop nut setup. Next, we'll block the propeller to stop it from turning while we loosen the prop nut. A 4x6 block works pretty well, but I also keep a short 2x10 on hand just in case. Once the block is in place, go ahead and turn the prop so that it's pressing against the block. Now we're ready to grab our 24 inch jumbo crescent wrench. This wrench works well for shafts up to 2 inch. For larger vessels, you will need a 36 or 48 inch pipe wrench, but for most boats, this does just fine. Once the prop nut is loose, go ahead and back it off a few threads. Do not remove the prop nut. Now this is where our modified Walter 2 end prop puller comes in handy. We've replaced the back plate with low rated hooks and high test chain. We'll start by setting up the top hook first, then we can tighten down the other two. It's crucial to apply equal tension to all three sides. Speaking of three sides, as you can see this is a five blade propeller. These pullers can be set up in either a three blade configuration or a four blade configuration. If this were a four blade propeller, then you just have four rods set up. And if you're pulling a three blade propeller or a five blade propeller, just use a three rod configuration. This keeps equal tension on the prop. Once all the hooks are on, go ahead and get all the nuts finger tight. Ensure that the puller plate is nice and even. Go ahead and grab your wrench and let's apply some tension. Once everything is set, go ahead and tighten down each rod. I like to give each one a few turns and go in a clockwise order. Take your time to ensure you have equal tension on all three rods. If one rod is tightened down more than the others or the prop puller is set up crooked, you may be working against yourself, especially on those hard to remove propellers. These prop pullers can be under a significant amount of load. Always stay off to the side and out of the line of fire. Keep your hands free and clear. If you need more leverage, you can put one hand on the strut. If it feels like you can't tighten those rods anymore, Here's a little trick to break that prop free. I like to call this the knock knock joke. Grab your three pound mini sledgehammer and give that prop puller a few solid knocks square in the center of the plate. You can also see that not removing the prop nut completely prevents the prop from falling off the shaft. Now let's go ahead and disconnect all of our rods in reverse order. To make things easier for yourself, you can leave the top rod and save it for last. Before we slide off the propeller, it needs to be tied off. I like to keep a long rope tied to a cleat on the dock and have an eye at the other end. Simply loop the rope through itself again and again on each blade. With the safety line tied off, we can remove the prop nut. If you drop the prop nut like I just did, I'll show you how to retrieve it in just a second. Before we go play search and recovery, let's remove our tab washer and slide the prop off carefully. Before the prop is removed, always make sure that the key is on top of the shaft. That way, gravity holds it in place and it won't just slide out. This marina has a muddy seafloor with very poor visibility. I'm going to drop the prop straight down below me and use the rope as our reference point. As you can see, once I get to the bottom, even in poor visibility, it only takes a few seconds to find that prop nut. <coughs> now it's time for the reinstall. Let's grab our wood blocks and get those in place. Let's grab our tool bucket and hang that from the shaft. We always want to keep our tools nice and close. Preparation is often overlooked, but to me, it's the most important part of the diving operation. I always like to keep the parts and tools prepped and ready to go, which usually makes for a quick and easy install. If you don't have a lift bag specifically designed for a propeller, no worries. An enclosed lift bag works just fine. I like to use these ones from Dive Gear Express. They're just as good as Hollis and a lot of the other manufacturers, and I highly recommend them as they're just as good, if not better quality, for about half the price. The only issue you may run into when using these lift bags on propellers is they can be quite tall. To combat this, I simply fold the lift bag in half, as you can see here. If you're unfamiliar with lift bags, they're pretty simple. 
They have an open flap at the bottom. You simply shove your regulator or your safe second in the bottom and press the purge button. Be sure that you are not tied to the lift bag and if the lift bag begins to shoot up, let it go. This next part is unedited as I wanted to give you an idea of some of the challenges you might face while installing a propeller. If you look inside of the prop hub, you can see that the keyway is actually pointing off to the side and not straight up and down. This will happen when you rig up a prop. The next issue we're running into is the lift bag is preventing us from sliding the prop all the way on. So to fix this, we need to disconnect the prop. Another reason why I have a rope always tied to the propeller is so that we can secure it to the strut if need be. We still have to install a tab washer before we can install the prop nut. So we're going to secure the prop to the strut so that we do not lose it. That would be a very bad day for myself and our client. This is also a good time to remind you to support the channel. If you haven't already, please give it a like and subscribe and leave a comment down below if you have any questions. I have lots of underwater footage that I've saved up from over the years that I will slowly be releasing out to you guys. So please subscribe if you would like to see more. Now the knot securing the prop doesn't need to be anything fancy as long as it will hold. With the prop secured we can go ahead and get the tab washer installed. The tab washer has a tab that goes inside of the keyway and has another tab that folds over the prop nut. First we're going to take a small chisel and our small sledgehammer and push the tab in. This prevents the tab washer from spinning. Next we'll grab our prop nut and spin it on by hand. Then we can remove the rope that's securing the propeller. Since we no longer need it we can get that out of our way. Next let's grab our 24 inch crescent wrench. For those long and slippery things I like to keep a leash on them. Pause. This crescent wrench is clipped off to my chest so if I drop it I don't lose it. Before setting up our wood blocks I personally like to tighten down the prop nut as much as I can by hand. This way I know the prop is sitting straight and true on the shaft before torquing it down. With the prop tightened by hand we can now install our wood blocking. Make sure that you turn the prop and press it up against the wood before tightening down the prop nut. The torque specs here are pretty simple for me. This boat is brand new, less than a year old, so I know that the marks on the tab washer are accurate and where the prop nut should be. If you ever need extra leverage to loosen or tighten a prop nut, you can always position yourself upside down and put your foot on the hole and get more leverage with your legs. Always keep a clean workspace, get the blocking and lift bag any extra ropes out of the way before we proceed. Next up, we need to bend the tab washer. This prevents the prop nut from spinning and backing off while underway. Last but not least, we need to install the prop nut anode. All you need is your Allen key set, the anode and the fastener, tighten it down so that it doesn't rattle off. And that's it, a complete guide to removing and installing a prop on a Nimbus powerboat. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment below with your experiences or any questions you might have. Thanks for watching and dive safe.